Amen. Receive Pastor Mark as he comes and give us a word this morning. He said we got something for us. Amen. So he's gonna give it to us. Amen. He's gonna give us what's coming to us. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Ain't no grave gonna hold this body. Well, about a month ago, a little over a month ago. Um, uh, let's see, about three months ago, I had a stroke. Uh, yesterday, I was in the hospital. Um, wasn't sure that I might be having a heart attack. I felt that way before, but I thought since the stroke and everything, maybe I should just kind of go in and have them check it out. You know, better that than, than just drop it dead in front of my wife at home. That would be, that would be lousy. You know, although. Ain't no grave gonna hold this body down. <laughs> and it's true. Why? Because healing belongs to us. Yeah. yeah. Healing belongs to his children. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And I've got stuff to do. And you've got stuff to do. Why? Because he's raising up kings. Yeah. And he's not just doing it willy-nilly for no reason. He's doing it because he has a plan and he has a purpose and you have a place in that plan yeah. and you have a purpose in that plan yeah. and he's not giving up on you so don't give up on him. Don't give it up on what God is giving you to do. Yeah. Do it. Have you all the stand? Stand hey. and then walk forward. Yeah. Walk forward. This uh, Psalm 40 has been on my heart a lot lately and it has to do with what you were talking about, Craig. And you're, you're from Footville? Yeah. I mean, you've already read my book. I've been there for years. So I love Footville. I first moved to Wisconsin. That was, that was where I lived. Um, Psalm 40 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. the Lord. He inclined and heard my cry. Yeah. He brought me out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. What's miry clay? Something you get stuck in. Yeah. Yeah. Something you can't get out on your own. In Arizona, um, where I, I've lived for about 20 years, they have this thing called caliche clay. And it's a clay that's so hard, it's like concrete. And the only way they can break it up is just keep pouring water on it, pouring water on it, pouring water on it. It's the only way they can get it to even move, to get it to do anything. Just keep hydrating, keep pumping that water into it. He set my feet upon a rock. That rock would be Jesus. Amen. And established my steps. He established how I would walk. He put a new song in my mouth. Notice so far, everything is he did. Yeah. He did. He did. Right. He did. Yes. I didn't do it. I didn't pull myself out of the horrible pit that I was in. And I was at one time. I was stuck. But he did. He pulled me out of that rock. He established my steps. Now, in order to do that, I have to listen. Wow. I have to pay attention. Wow. I have to be obedient. But he did it. He gave me the power to do that, and he's given you the power to do that. And then it says, He put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Notice it didn't say praise to my God. It is my God. Yeah. He is my God, but he is our God. Our God. It says, Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. That word fear, by the way, does not mean <coughs> dread or terror. It means awe. It means respect. And respect in a good way. 
you know, we throw that word around, oh, if someone's disrespecting me, this is, you know, you need to respect me. We're talking awe. We're talking about earned, absolute, total respect. Yeah. So, people are going to see you when you come up out of whatever that pit happened to be. And that pit doesn't have to be drug addiction or alcoholism right. or right. poverty. It doesn't right. have to be anything. Whatever it is to you is what it is to you, but it's still the condition of your heart. Yeah. It just gets a hold of it. Yeah. And he does the work. All we have to do is go along for the ride. And it's a wild ride. But then, what, but what does he do with it? He uses you with your new walk and your new standing to be a show to the world around you. To show off his goodness, his kingdom, his life, his right. new life that he pumps into you. I'm not even, I'm not even halfway through the introduction. <laughs> I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Isaiah 43, uh, verse 18. He says, Forget the former things. Do right. not dwell on the past. Right. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wastelands. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. I'm, I'm stealing a, a line out of your playbook here, Pastor Rick. He says, Jesus said, Whoever puts his hand to the plow, uh -huh. but looks behind it, isn't uh -huh. fit for the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because if you're looking backwards while you're trying to push something forward, you're going to be all over the place, yeah. all over the map. Your walk, the, the steps that have been established in Psalm 40, your walk is going to show instability. Right. And no one's going to follow that. No one's going to honor that. No one's going to honor God if they see you flopping all over the place. Yeah. <clears throat> he says, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you see it? Don't you see it? Oh, yeah. When you're... How many of you in here are parents? Okay. Praise God. By the way, just because you're not a biological parent doesn't mean you're not a parent. Because right. God still has this way of putting you. I don't have any children. Oh. And I have five children. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have one adopted child and I have four stepkids. Mm -hmm. But they're all my kids. Right. Whether they like yeah. it or not. <laughs> <laughs> whether they claim me, God claimed them for me. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. so you ever have one of your kids do a doodle that's completely indecipherable on a piece of paper and hand it to you. And you say, oh, that's so wonderful. And what is that? And the kid says, well, that's you, Daddy. And you're like, oh, I agree now. And sort of in a different shape. But you love it. You cherish it. Why? Because it's that child creating. And you're going, that's so cool. Why, when Adam was in the garden with God, did God not parade all the animals past Adam and say, okay, this one's called a zebra, this one's called a, a crow, this one's called a... No, God didn't do that. God brought them out and let Adam name them. Yes. Why? Because Adam yes. was being creative with what God had given him. And God, being a good father, was just going, that's so cool. That's actually, you made that one a buffalo. Of course it's a buffalo. Who wouldn't think that? Just, it's that intimacy. It's that yes. relationship. Yes. And God loves that about us. And you know what? He loved that about him. And God does a new thing. And God does a creative thing. There's a whole lot more I was going to go with that, but we're going to skip right to the things. Uh, if you want, turn to, turn to uh, chapter 10 of the book of Acts. I mean, sorry, yeah, the book of Acts. And if 
I fall over, it's because these are reading glasses. I can only see what's... There's a sweet spot. And the whole world is moving in different directions now. Um, okay, this is where Peter was called to go to uh, Cornelius' house. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to tell the story. Jesus is gone. He has done his work. He's done everything that he needed to do to create the world the way he needed it to be for his brothers and sisters that were still on this earth. That would be us to have dominion over the earth again, to take control over the system yeah. again, yeah. to be the kings of our kingdoms again. Jesus is gone. The Holy Spirit has come to empower us. Peter has even raised somebody from the dead at this point in the story. The, the Fledgling church is just sort of, and the, and the church, the word of the church is starting to go out and starting to go out to cities that aren't primarily Jewish. Because when the apostles talked to Jesus, their idea was that this new kingdom, this Holy Spirit, this new life that we're going to experience is specifically for Jews, specifically for his family. That was the impression that they were under. On the day of Pentecost, those were the people who were filled with the Holy Ghost. Those were the people who spoke in tongues. So it's starting to go out to Gentile cities, cities that aren't primarily Jewish. And he's at one of these cities, and he's, he's fellowshipping and teaching some of, the, uh, some of the Jews there who now believe in Jesus. And he gets a, a summons, he gets a call from Cornelius' house. And Cornelius is a Roman citizen. He is not a Jew. And Cornelius had a vision from God saying that there's a man in another town around here. You're going to send for him. He's going to come for you and he's going to tell you what you're going to do. What's, what's next for you in your life. And Peter, while this is going on, and these, and these servants that he sent to go get Peter, Peter has a vision. It says he's hungry and he, he is waiting for food to be made and he has a vision and this vision is a sheet that comes down from heaven. And there are all the animals of the world, wild animals, different animals, and Peter's hungry and a voice says, Peter, go kill and eat. And Peter says, no, uh-uh, no. I'm, uh, I've never eaten anything unclean. I, I can't do that. So a voice from heaven comes to Peter, who has spent all of this amazing time with Jesus, who's filled with the Holy Ghost, who's raised people from the dead, and tells him to do something different than what he's used to doing. And Peter says, no. Uh-uh. What is this, a test? And that comes down again. Same thing. Peter, go, kill, eat. No. The voice tells him, don't call unclean the things that I have made clean. Right. Right. Who are you? Who are you? Right. Same message he kind of gave to Job, by the way. Who are you? And because Peter had this notion, he had this idea that was built up in his head that this is how the kingdom works. The kingdom works that we preach this message to Jews and Jews get filled with the Holy Ghost and they get saved and life is great. And then there's miracles that happen as a result from that. This is an Easter message, by the way. We'll get back to that. And so, so while Peter is just thinking about what the heck happened, all I wanted was a cheeseburger, and well, no, he's Jewish, he wouldn't get a cheeseburger. All I wanted was a hamburger with cheese in the next room. And, uh, and, and this voice is telling me to do something different, something crazy. This is insane, we don't do that, we don't eat animals that are on the list of 
And these guys knock on the door and they say, hey, we're here to, to summon Peter to ask him to come and talk to our boss. So they can't come in because they're Gentiles, because there's a separation. They're not supposed to be in each other's houses. Why? Because it defiles the Jew to be in the house of the Gentile at that time. And he goes with them the next day, and they all go, and he's got some of his gang with them, and they've got their messengers. They all get there, they get to Cornelius' house. Cornelius bows down in front of Peter, and Peter says, no, uh-uh, no, don't do that. I'm, I'm just a dude like you are. There's a lot of dudes in my stories, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. And so it's like, I'm just a dude just like you are. And uh, so he says, okay. And he tells him the story, okay, I'm, I'm here waiting because God said, you're going to tell me what to do next. And he doesn't know. Peter doesn't even know why he's there. He just knows that he's there. But he has entered into the house. He's already crossed the threshold into doing something that God doesn't do according to the thoughts that he has in his head. And he, the guy tells him the story, I had a dream that God said, God said, come here. I'm here. And Peter starts to tell him the story about Jesus and all of the amazing things that have happened, a little bit of history. And when he gets to the part where he talks about everyone being filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, they get filled with the Holy Spirit. They start to speak in tongues. And it says that the Jews that were with him were just, oh, what happened? What is going on here? This is craziness. This is our thing. What? And they're doing it? And Peter turns to him and says, hey, is there any reason why we shouldn't just have water brought in right now and baptize these people right now? They received the same gift from God that we did. Right. So why not? But do you think that if God hadn't they brought that sheep down and up and talked to him and already said, don't call unclean what I've made clean, do you think Peter would have been immediate to just jump right on it? Maybe, but probably not. He needed, he needed a heads up. He needed to know that this is where we're going. You may not understand it, but this is where we're going. And then, you know, he had to immediately think, well, yeah, Jesus did say that he was going to go to some other places and, to, and talk to other people. And, you know, what are we? What was he? Jesus was, you know, the Christ in the world to take the rightful place and to advance the kingdom. So, they did. They got baptized. Here's my favorite part of the story, by the way. He goes back to Jerusalem to tell them, to tell everybody what happened. And when he gets to the part in the story where he says, and the Holy Spirit dropped on them just like it did on us, and we baptized them, and look, they're now part of us, he's saying God did an amazing miracle, something we never even dreamed of, a creative act that was not anywhere in our history. But look at it, completely, wow! And you know what they said? You went into the house of a Gentile? How often does that happen? Jesus healed people. And the, and the, the religious leaders of the day said, You healed somebody on the Sabbath? Creativity. So God delights in our creative acts. God delights when we find a new way to lend comfort and aid to a brother and sister. God delights when we sing a new song. Because yeah. where did it come from? He put it in our mouth. He put it in our mouth. I'm a, I'm a songwriter, and most of the songs that I've written since coming to the Lord uh, 30 some years ago, I feel as if, this is just Markology, by the way, it's not, not etched in stone, it's not in the Bible, except in mine, I wrote it in the back. I'll be sure if you want. Um, I have this, this hunch that there are songs floating around in the atmosphere that God is just, they're out there, and whoever will just grab it. 
Whoever's heart is wide open at that moment, they can hear it, and they just grab it. I waited patiently on the Lord. He inclined and heard my cry. He leaned in to hear me. He leaned in because he was that fascinated okay. with what I was doing. Yeah. And then, and then he took over from there. I had a series of visions in the last few months, um, and my wife has likewise uh, had some visions that have coincided. Um, and they've happened without us really talking about it. I see the Rock River Valley. Now, I'm not saying it's only the Rock River Valley, but this is what I see. I see the Rock River Valley, and I see God's children leaning in to hear something. There's something, there's a sound that's just tickling right on the edge. And I see old wells opening up. Old institutions. Uh -huh. People who at one time were flowing in the spirit and in yeah. the gifts being reopened. And I don't count myself as one of them. Like a lot of people, I have experienced uh, damage in the church. It just happens. I'm sorry. You know, sometimes, sometimes it just happens. I think it's a part of your growth. Um, so if you get in a situation... But I was so blessed because the man who led me to the Lord in 1988, Ron Montgomery, he's gone on to be with the Lord now. But the man who led me to the Lord gave me a piece of advice the day after I said the sinner's prayer. And that was, you're going to experience hurt in churches. You're going to get hurt, and you're going to hurt people. You won't want to. Sometimes you'll think you're doing God's work. I've done that, by the way. Only immediately after you go, wow. And you need to know that your relationship is with God. Keep good relations with people in church, but your right. primary relationship is with God. Right. Amen. And realize it's going to happen. Ask for forgiveness when you've done it. Forgive when other people have done it. And walk on. And get on with the mission. Because if you sit around sucking your thumb in a back room going, that hurts me. Guess what? The devil won, and he didn't like to do anything. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. you you just you just surrendered. And we're not called to surrender. We're called to advance. We're called to hold the line. That man did me such an incredible favor, and it happens to all of us, and it will happen. Right. Sometimes God is doing a new thing. Yes. And pouring out that water. Getting back to the vision. I see old wells opening up. I see new springs opening up. New works, new Christians, new believers, new followers. But I see those things opening up. And I see, I, I keep seeing a vision of, you know the water tower here on the way? That it's, it's not really a water tower, it's a pedestal for a water tower. The water tower is gone. I see that tower over and over and over again. And there are those who are straining to hear the sound of the water coming up. They know it's coming. They know it's coming. And everybody just wants to hear it and be a part of it. And you, I see it. I see water coming up through that tower and spilling out through the doorway and spilling over the ledge of the windows. And I see it coming up. But when it gets to the top, it's being met by springs that are opening up and wells that are opening up in Janesville and Milton, here, everywhere. And it's spilling out into the farmlands and it's filling the Rock River to flooding and it's, it's catching both banks right. as it goes down. Right. And it's coming out of that water tower. But guess what? There's no container at the top of that water tower. Just like there's going to be no container here. Right. God's Spirit. Over that, over that water tower. And guess what's just south of there? White College. Guess what's just north of there? ABC Supply. The library. 
government centers. Yeah. It's what I mean is we're talking about the economic centers, the government centers, the centers of learning, the centers of influence, and influence doesn't have to be an elected official. Although congratulations on your on your yeah. It doesn't have to be an elected official. It doesn't have to be someone with tremendous money. You know what it is? It's someone with a heart and a passion for God. Yeah. Who can't keep quiet because yeah. that river is flowing out of them and they can't stop. Why? And they can't stop. I have been more excited about prayer and about worship in the last six Lord. months than at any time in my life. And Amen. there were times where I thought I, I was just going to burst. I spent about 20 years in Arizona, in the desert, kind of licking my wounds after some church beatings. And I was wrong. I was wrong. By taking all of that time off. Now, I learned, and God used me in that. But I was wrong for not charging forward. But for whatever reason, I couldn't. But in Isaiah, what is, what is he saying? God says... I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And then it says, The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. God didn't put that water there for the animals. The animals received the blessing, but the blessing was put there for his children. The blessing was put there for his children to wake them up, to fill them up. And they, the animals, who received the byproduct of that, who received a blessing that wasn't necessarily meant for them, but they could get in that, they had the common sense to praise him and thank him. Right. And it goes on now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it goes on right after that to say that that. He asked the children of Israel right after that. He says, why is it that I do these things for you and you don't praise me back? Uh -huh. And you don't praise me back. But that's not us. That's not this place. That's not these people. There is a people. Some of them are here at Kingdom Voice, but they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Some of them are sleeping in this morning. Some of them mm -hmm. don't know anything about right. Jesus, except they don't want to know Jesus right now. Right. But God is preparing. God is preparing a cleansing for them. God is preparing a way to wash that clay away from their feet so that he can pull them up and establish them. And so many of the people that are going to be at the forefront of this were not at the forefront right now or 20 years ago. Right. When I, I'm kind of a student of church history and when the um, when the Pentecostal revival happened in 1904 in Wales and 1907 in, in Los Angeles, when that whole thing broke loose, it was it was an offshoot of the Holiness Movement, and the Holiness Movement had been a powerful movement in what God was doing on the earth. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The Holiness Movement didn't like the Pentecostals because they weren't doing it right. Mm -hmm. and God doesn't do that. God doesn't go to Cornelius' house. Right. But God did, because God does creative things. Right. Then, skip forward several years, and when the charismatic renewal happened, and the charismatic movement happened, a lot of Pentecostals didn't like that. And then, to bring unwashed hippies into the church, good Lord, what is going on here? Sure. And then, when the Toronto Blessing happened, with the holy laughter and the people falling on the floor and the gold falling on the Bibles. Was some of that stuff fake in every one of these things? Yes. But was God at the heart of it? Look at the fruit. Look at the fruit. That's all you need to do. Look at the fruit. Did it glorify God? Did it raise the people up and fill them up with the power to take their rightful place in the kingdom and move forward and move that message forward? Yes, it did. I have a friend of mine who I dearly love. I won't say any names. Some of we both know. I, I dearly love this person. They grew up in the the hippie movement, the the charismatic movement, and they grew up in this. and And then they got involved with the whole holy laughter thing, the Rocky Horror Brown thing in Florida, and and all of this craziness that was happening 20 years ago or more. 
and absolutely rejected it because God doesn't work like that. That was just flesh. That was just human beings doing stupid stuff, right? And as I was listening to my friend tell me about this, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm fruit. Huh? And the person said, what? I said, I'm, I'm fruit. I'm, I'm fruit of that. I, I came from that. And I've been ministering for years. I, I don't know how effectively, but, but God touched my heart and, and established my path and put me on a rock right. and watched my steps and established them. And I come out of that, so something came out of it. And, you know, was there a lot of nonsense? Oh, heck yes, there was a lot of nonsense. But, so, as someone said at the time of Jesus, and as someone said about Peter when Peter was taken for the, before the Sanhedrin, hey, be careful what you criticize. Be careful what you attack. Because God might be in it. And if God's in it, do we really want to be on the wrong side of history? Right. And the wrong side of God? So, they said to Peter, when he came back and was telling them what had happened at Cornelius' house, they said, you went into the house of a Gentile? God doesn't do that. But, ultimately, what was the answer? He said, he repeated the whole story about what had happened. And then he said, I love kids. And then he said, I love kids. Um, and then he said, but then Peter said, you know what? Now I'm paraphrasing. If you have a problem with what just happened down there, you got a problem with God. Wow. Not me. Wow. And that's a recurring theme all through the Bible. If you got a problem with how God's moving, you got a problem with God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now, of course there's silliness. Of course there's ridiculousness. I see this wave of water rushing up. Different water. Water that is the old, the new. Blending together, washing together to make an impact on this region. Amen. And move out from it. And I think God's doing this all over the world right now. Amen. Yeah. But but all I know about is my little my little portion of it. <laughs> Two years ago God moved us, my wife and I, back from Arizona to be here, which is where I had lived before, for a plan and a purpose. And I'm not leaving until that plan and purpose is complete. <laughs> I may not have the plan. Right. But I know who does. And I'm willing to just listen Amen. and follow. And sometimes it's a process. Sometimes you put yourself out there and you put your heart and soul into getting elected to a certain position because that's what you have in your mind. Right. And then God turns around and blesses you and says, you know what, I'm going to make you a man of influence over here yeah. now. <laughs> and maybe next time you're going to a much higher place than you were shooting for. I had a worship team that I was on uh, about a year ago, and I'd been on it for a while. I built it from scratch. And it meant more to me than the ministry God had given me. Mm -hmm. And I poured my heart and soul into it. And I dreamed of what it could be. And I got to thinking about it this morning. It, about six months ago, the whole thing just, it, it was crumbling. And I prayed and prayed, and God released me, and I walked. And I mourned it. I wanted it. But you know what? I'm not the author and perfecter of my faith. Yeah. It was a yeah. place that I needed to be for a season. Uh -huh. And now that season, when that season was over, I was obedient. I moved on. And whatever it was that I needed to know from that moment, yeah. I will use in the future. Right. Sir, whatever moment, you know I love you, Granny. Yeah. Whatever yeah. moment, whatever thing God <laughs> needed you to learn in that moment, yeah. He has given you and put it in your heart, even if you don't understand it right, right now. Yeah. Right, right. I believe that all the yeah. time. Larry, whatever experiences you've had, yeah. I'm 
with someone modeling the love of Christ to me. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes you're right. But love each other. A new commandment I give you. Love each other. That's it. God is doing a new thing right now. God has been doing it, is doing it, will do it. It is happening. It will include probably everybody in this room yeah. in one way or another. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm not the boss of it. I don't have to be. I just want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. I just want to be a part of it. I just want to do what I'm supposed to do. And it's funny, my, my wife, uh, who is relatively a baby Christian, had the same vision at the, at the same time that I had it about what God is doing and how God is washing clean the body of Christ and raising up new people and old people. Why, are, why do the old people have to be involved? And by old, I mean people who've been at this a long time. Why do they have to be involved? Because they need to guide and shepherd people who are having all kinds of new crazy ideas. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are old. <laughs> You're not old in the room. <laughs> oh, and she's not old either. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up. I had a million other things I wanted to say, but how does this have to do with Easter? He did a new thing. He did a new thing. They were waiting for a Messiah, and instead they got God. They were waiting for a Messiah that was going to kick butt over their enemies and establish them as the top dogs in their world. And instead they got a suffering servant who showed them how to lead in adversity, who showed them how to be. He came to bring the kingdom of God, and they were looking to see the king of Israel. Right. Right. But he brought the kingdom of God. What did he say over and over and over again? Right. I've come to bring you the kingdom of God. I've come to bring you the kingdom of God. Sometimes we focus so much on Jesus that it becomes a cult of personality. That's true. We don't follow what That's he's true. saying. That's true. And what he's saying, and right. he would do a miracle and then teach. And then he would teach and he would do a miracle. And then he would push the people a little bit harder. And some of them would fall away. Because right. he was testing their heart. Because he was letting them, he was, he was building up that, that love relationship where you're, you know, if, if you've ever been in love with anybody and you're the one doing all the phone calling and you're the one right. reaching out to them all the time, right. that's going to get pretty old. Right? <laughs> so you've got to get to a point where both parties are sort of pursuing. Right. And that's what he was doing. He was setting up a situation where those who really wanted it, those who were passionate, those who were hungry for it, would pursue it and grab a hold of it and make it their own and make it their own. And he did it. What Jesus did on the cross was 100% successful. Yes. Absolutely, positively. Yes. By the time the Holy Spirit hit his inner circle, by the time the Holy Spirit hit that 120 people in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, absolute success had been declared in the heavens and on earth. But it's still ours to take. Yes. The children of Israel entered into the promised land. But guess what? There were still struggles. There were still Absolutely. fights. There were still things that needed to happen. Let's just remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. In other words, don't fight each other. Love one another. Yeah. Yeah. And for all the times I've been wrong that I can't possibly remember or count, God forgives me. I need to learn to forgive myself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So what does this have to do with Easter? He is risen. He is risen. He won. He won. Now let's, now let's just grab that kingdom. <laughs> Amen. 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 Did you get it?